All right, we're going to tie the Pooter Pupa Caddis today. Uh, this is a pattern that I have with Montana Fly Company. It's been out for a number of years and is um, just a great all-around caddis pattern for pupating caddis. Uh, a number of you have been asking me for a step-by-step -step tutorial, so um, here it is. We're going to start with a size 14 up eye uh, light caddis hook from Montana Fly Company. That up eye really sets this pattern at the right angle as you're having it go through your nymph rig or or uh, swinging it at the end of the run, which is where I think it finds its its best action, is, is to swing it at the end of the run, let it lot, rise up through the water column. Um, do these in you know size 14 and 16, 18s, um, but also ties really well for larger caddis. Um, switching out some colors, and you can do it in a variety of different colors. We're gonna do it in the light olive color today. And we're gonna start with uh, Montana Fly Company Midge Body Thread in a light olive. This does a really good job of matching uh, the lighter, almost chartreuse caddis that we have here in Colorado. And we're gonna start with it spooled up on a bobbin, and we're gonna start that thread about about the 70% mark. We're gonna take that thread down the bend of this hook. We're gonna use the bend of this hook to really um, help our shape. Caddis have that really interesting shape. And this, this hook does a really nice job of making that, that uh, curve in the body. Caddis do have a, a fairly large um, backside and we're going to use this 230 denier thread um, that we have here in the midge body thread to help us build some of that bulk while also keeping it nice and, and even. We're going to take some span flex, and this is a dark brown span flex or life flex. You just want a spandex leg. Okay, and we're going to match up the ends there. If you'd like, you can go ahead and cut those even. And on the larger sizes, for sure, I like the two strands. On, uh, if you get down into 18s and 20s, you can switch over to uh, one strand. But we're just going to take that and we're going to capture that right behind uh, our tie-in point on both of those pieces. And I'm not going to pull this much. I'm going to let the, the thread cover up that span flex. And I'm going to use that to build a little bit of this, this body here. What you'll notice about this thread, <clears throat> excuse me, is that it's uh, it's got some really nice shine to it without being really over the top. It's much more subtle than um, flashaboo or a tinsel body, and uh, but it has a great little glimmer in it where you get that that um, shine of that natural as it's starting to pupate. We're gonna take this and we're just gonna use our thread to fill in any gaps and give us a nice smooth underbody. And we're gonna stop right back down where we stopped that span flex. And I wanna make sure that that span flex is right on the top of the hook because we're gonna use that as our back coloration. Now, if you look at our caddis pupa, um, as you start sampling waters and seeing seeing caddis pupae, you'll notice that they have a, a real um, dark top side that is segmented with the body color. And I think that's a really important um, characteristic of that bug that we can capitalize using this thread. So we're going to take this thread and I want to make sure that it's nice and corded up so that it stays together. It is a multi-part thread. We're going to take our fingers and we're going to pull this, this span flex over the top. Now you can see that it starts to split there. We want to keep it nice and together as we wrap over the top of this. And the first wrap is definitely the, the hardest and you just kind of want to shade towards my side on the vise and get that first wrap nice and solid. So you can see that it's right on top of the hook. If it splits at all, you can kind of pull it. And then you can kind of walk your thread up a little bit. And we want to do the same thing. Each time I am shading a little bit to my side because my thread will start to pull that over the top. I'm going to lock that down with a couple wraps each time. Pull that span flex back over.
lock it back in. And by keeping both pieces um, loops together, you can definitely use your finger here to go inside the loop and it makes it definitely a little bit easier. So we're gonna do, it's four segments and we'll do one more here. I like to do five segments on this size. And then when we are finished here, I'm just gonna give a couple nice solid wraps on top of this. And we don't wanna build up much bulk here in the front because that's gonna be where our uh, the rest of our bug's gonna be. So I just wanna give a couple nice solid wraps on top of there, keep the tension on the thread. You can see that I'm even moving that hook there and then lock it in with a couple wraps on the ends, on the front of that span flex. And then you can go ahead and clip that off with your scissors. We're gonna switch over to um, an MFC 8 aught black thread and we're just gonna transfer to a new thread. So I'm gonna start this thread on the front here and then I'm going to wrap just like if I was tying off a material. And then I can go ahead and clip off that other thread and I've just transferred my thread. So we wanna smooth out a little bit in the front here. I usually go right back over the top of that, that other segment. And I wanna start about that 60% mark. Well, we're going to have our wing bud materials. Caddis have a real prominent wing buds, and they hold them, their legs and their wing buds all underneath their body. They're not on the side of their body. We use medallion sheeting. This is the Buggy Dark Dun. Uh, this is a great product for imitating Caddis wing buds. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut off a little strip of it. You can see the nice modeling that it has there. I'm going to invert the fly. And I'm going to tie this in like I would if I had um, doing some spent spinner wings here. I'm going to take it and I'm going to put an X wrap over the top and you can kind of manipulate this material and get one set of nice X wraps over the top of that. And then you can kind of take your fingers and you're just pulling that and it's going to keep that X right there on the, on the bottom of this bug. And go and re-invert my my vise, and I can take those and pull them back, sweep them back and underneath the fly, and then I'm gonna just take and wrap just a couple wraps over the top of those so those lock those in place. When I cut these wing buds, I'm gonna pull them back down underneath, and I'm gonna use that hook point and the end of my body and I'm just gonna give those a clip. And then if you want to, if you wanna be real picky, you can clip off any of the sharp edges on that cut and kinda of round over the wings a little bit. So that there's no blunt edges on there. And those will hold right nice and underneath that fly. You notice that they're a little bit short of the body and they're kind of on an angle since we cut them back towards that body and made that angle go in just like that. Our legging material is going to be, um, you can do it in two different ways. You can do it with uh, standard Hung Hungarian partridge um, or you can use whiting Brahma hen. Um, whiting Brahma hen is going to be a little bit softer. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this this uh, partridge or, or Brahma from the back shoulder section or in between the wings where it's a little bit more brown and a little bit darker. I don't want that, that um, kind of salt and pepper look to it. I want that nice brown mottled feather to it. Okay, And what we're going to do is we're going to just clip out the center of this feather, just as if we were tying in betas legs or anything on top of the fly. And usually when you would tie in those betas legs, you would stick them on top of the of the fly. But what that's gonna do is it's gonna put our legs on top of our fly. And as I mentioned that caddis carry their legs below their body or on the sides, lower half. So I'm gonna take this and I'm going to put a couple loose wraps over the top of that V cut feather underneath of this. And then if you notice, 
as I pull this, you'll watch those those hackle fibers fall right underneath that caddis. And then we can go ahead and tighten down. And we can clip off. Just take some securing wraps and put those, you notice that they're underneath the caddis. Kind of take your fingers and manipulate them if you need to so they sit where you want them to. Okay. The front portion of this fly is going to be um, natural gray ostrich hurl. I'm going to take a nice fluffy piece. I'm going to just take it and I'm going to pop the tip of it. That's that weak part of it. And I'm going to tie this in by the tip and progress my thread down the, the fly a little bit. I want this to be nice and puffy. I don't want this to lay back slick. So I'm going to let this stand up like a hackle. And depending on the length of your ostrich hurl, oh, I dropped it there, you might need to tie in one more extra feather. And if you want this to be a little bit more dense on there, I like them to be a little bit more um, sparse. I think it flows in the water a little bit better. When we get down to the front here, I can go ahead and capture that, give it a couple nice wraps, and then we can go ahead and just pop that. And you can see that that ostrich hurl, even though we tied it backwards and, and put it where it's sticking parallel or perpendicular, excuse me, to the hook shank, like a hackle feather, it's still going to lay backwards, but when that thing gets in the water, it's going to move a little bit better. Our antenna for this are going to be golden pheasant. Golden pheasant has a really nice modeling to it. It's also a little bit more um, durable than ringneck pheasant, but in a pinch, you could definitely use ringneck instead of this if you'd like. Um, ringneck just tells, tends to be a little bit more brittle in my opinion. So I'm gonna take two pieces of this and I'm just going to pull them from the stem. And just like everything else on a caddis, there's nothing on the top of this fly. Um, they carry their antenna kind of towards the side of their body. I'm going to take this and I'm going to split that tip with the hook eye. And that allows me to split it at the front, but it keeps it together at the butt. And it just makes it a little bit easier to work with. And what I can do is I can take a couple of nice loose wraps and then manipulate those or pull them to length of where I would like them to be. And if we're thinking like a clock dial, I want these to be kind of 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock or 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. So I'm going to pull those to length. We want them to be a little bit longer, a little bit longer than the body. And kind of sitting off to the side. So if you notice, we can get those hackle fibers, those golden pheasant fibers exactly when you want them before you give some nice securing wraps. And then if you got some nice secure wraps, you can just go ahead and pop those butt ends. I do put a little bit of a, of a head on the caddis. And before I go in with my whip finish.
if you want you can put a little bit of head cement on there or um, UV resin. Um, that's a great little pattern for uh, caddis um, in our local waters. It uh, swings very nicely at the end of the run and that midge body thread pokes through when that thing is wet and gives a really nice chartreuse um, or coloration that pops through that um, body of legs and wing buds and ostrich hurl. And it's, uh, it's just a fun little pattern to fish. I usually throw it in a multi-nymph rig or swing it um, with a tan caddis or a chartreuse, maybe even one of each, and swing it through the run. Um, I tie them in sizes 12 through 20. Um, depending on the caddis that I'm fishing for or that I'm fishing with and uh, you can do them in a multiple of different colors using that midge body thread. My name is Chris Kruger and that was the Pooter Pupa. Thank you for watching.